Good morning and welcome to the Mayor's Weekly. As always, we're pleased to have you with us. And uh, this morning, uh, uh, Kathy Shamless, our City Clerk Chief Financial Officer, is joining me. And Kathy and I have talked uh, over the last uh, several days about uh, uh, this uh, term. It's, it's drawing to a close. Uh, uh, one day next week will mark uh, four years uh, since I came to office and uh, and our current council members were sworn in and and we came to the conclusion it might be good to spend just a few minutes and touch on some of the things that uh, that we think uh, have played a, a monumental role in, uh, in the success that we've enjoyed over the four years. What I would uh, say to you is uh, uh, the past four years are unprecedented. Uh, Ms. Shamless' 30-plus year tenure uh, uh, supports that. Uh, her research uh, beyond her time at City Hall mm -hmm. further supports that. And uh, so it's not uh, our purpose this morning uh, to boast about those things or try to bring uh, uh, accolades in any way, but rather uh, to touch on the things that uh, have been material uh, to these uh, uh, this positive environment that, that, that exists in the city today, and uh, it uh, and what I say to you, uh, you're entitled to your opinion. If you debate that, uh, we certainly welcome your comments or whatever. But uh, Kathy, we, uh, uh, we we look back uh, to uh, November the seventh of 2016, and. Uh, uh, we put in place a new mayor and uh, we uh, council. Uh, I think uh, all of those folks, uh, except in, uh, for Mr. Moore, were, had some contact with, with, with city operations. And uh, nobody knows better where you, uh, we were at uh, than you do. But uh, as I think about some of the things that I think really got the ball rolling, and uh, uh, the first thing that jumps out in my mind is. Uh, is we, uh, uh, we we took on some debt, and some of my political adversaries uh, said early on that I got the city in debt. And if I get this wrong, uh, certainly your correction will be well received. But uh, what we uh, I went to the council after you provided a, a debt schedule to the city, mm -hmm. what we owed, what were our payments, that sort of thing, and and what we you knew and what we could see is two pieces of debt that were about to pay mm -hmm. off that uh, had debt service requirements for a million dollars a year. That's correct. And what I said to the council, I said, if you will give me, not give me the money, but uh, give me uh, the latitude uh, to have this million dollars, I'll go to the bond market and see what I can borrow. And then, once I learn that, I'll see if I can't lay that money off against critical needs in this city. And we did just say it, Kathy, mm -hmm. and uh, oh the uh, the first piece of that, uh, and we'll talk just briefly about what those monies did, but we uh, uh, went to the bond market, and uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about what we borrowed and the nice windfalls we had in that transaction. Two pieces, we uh, uh, the, the market paid us a nice premium, uh, and then... Uh, uh, the debt priced at uh, uh, significantly lower than what we thought, mm -hmm. which uh, saved us money over the amortization of this debt. Your thoughts on that, Kathy? Well, we went. Uh, we wanted to borrow 11.2 million, right? Uh, and we had projects laid out that uh, we felt like that's what we needed, right? And so, um, as we went to the market to borrow that money, we did receive a good favorable interest rate and um, we actually um, ended up getting 11.2 million but the the debt laid out against it was around 10 million so we we uh, received very good results when we sold those bonds and, and that's just a windfall just I mean windfall. anyway I mean you 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 uh, your profession is accounting and uh, that's uh, that's not smoke and mirrors. That's mm -hmm. real dollars that's because real. your bank account. When we sign uh, uh, those uh, general obligation warrants, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you credited the bank account of the city, you credited the account of the city 
for deputy to count the mm -hmm. city, uh, get my okay. counting right a minute, mm -hmm. uh, for $11.2 million, but when you booked our debt, you booked something in a $10 million that, range. Yeah. Right. right. That's exactly so how that played out. Yeah. Now let's talk about um, um, what we did with that money. That money we spent a little over $7 million on the largest paving project to ever take place in the, the city's history we know about. That's correct, and we finished that paving project uh, in this year. That's right, and none of that was done in anticipation of, uh, of anybody's political pursuits. You know, a lot of times you see paving, it happens six months ahead of election time. This happened early and mm -hmm. midterm mm -hmm. of this election cycle, didn't it? Absolutely, and it started back in, um, I guess it was 2017, and then we actually completed it um, probably in the spring um, of this year. Kathy, we, uh, we know that our equipment in the street department was uh, um, past being worn out. Uh, uh, you know that uh, our repair bills were just huge and we didn't have enough functioning equipment to uh, 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 deploy uh, multiple teams to do work. We had barely enough equipment to deploy one team. Everybody else kind of had to twiddle their thumbs and watch. Very inefficient. Today we've probably spent over a million and a half dollars in revitalizing our street department and buying equipment that will serve this city for years to come. We certainly have, and as a part of that, we we were able to reduce the contract labor that was previously being paid out because we didn't have the equipment necessary to do those jobs. Let me tell you what Ms. Shamus is talking about there. What we found, and uh, certainly we have to comply with bid laws, but uh, we see things that were happening beyond, below the threshold for bids. And we had all sorts of work that was being let to independent contractors at what I think were unfavorable mm -hmm. prices to this city. And today, that is virtually non-existent. Uh, we have capable people, our people are equipped. It's played a big role in expense reduction. They have, and they feel better about uh, being able to do those jobs. They take a lot of pride right. in the jobs that they, they're doing. Kathy, we are an auditorium that the pre-COVID is widely used, a great facility, and the uh, dehumidifier uh, there, which is a million dollar piece of equipment rounded, uh, was past its life expectancy, and uh, while it was not dead, it was clearly on a ventilator, uh, to the point that it was not uh, extracting water from that in, uh, closed environment, uh, those chemically uh, in laden water was attacking the roof structures that mm -hmm. were metal at, uh, to the point that we thought we may have serious structural problems because of rust. Uh, the, the water with chemicals in it are very caustic in it. Uh, and that um, today we have a state of the art uh, dehumidifier that's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Close to a million dollars, was it not? It was close to a million dollars. Um, and, you know, it's going to last hopefully 15 years. Yeah. But, you know, the, the fact that that dehumidifier wasn't functioning properly also was creating some strain on some other equipment uh, that we had in that building. So all that's been corrected. and. Um, and and we have uh, we have serviced this debt just like we were serving it, and we 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 brought savings to the city by taking on this debt and deploying those monies to critical areas there. Mm -hmm. Kathy and I said I knew we wouldn't have enough time, but another thing I want to talk about. Let's talk about paying our people what they're supposed to be paid. Can you touch on where we were at when we started and where we're at today? And I know you can't go into minute details. No, but in uh, 2000 and. 16 that was prior to the election it was determined that city employees it had been at least 10 years since we had had a, a pay study so we met we got that study completed probably in um, July September of 2016 it came back that our employees were being underpaid and to to have brought them up 
to where we needed to would have cost this city half a million dollars and I'm just rounding I don't remember the exact numbers and it was thought in 2016 that in fact I heard some of our department managers indicate well what we'll never be able to get this plan implemented um, we had some real deficiencies in pay at our police department according to the plan and so but as you know uh, we in 2016 started and when you become uh, in as our mayor started looking at ways of how can we get this implemented we needed to pay our pl our employees what the market indicated that that the value of those jobs uh, were so we decided we could do that uh, in phases and um, as you know we today have everyone being paid exactly where they should be within that study it, um, and Kathy you, you, you've seen it I've seen it our department managers have seen it whatever what that's done for morale has been unbelievable our, our turnover has has, has shrunk to, uh, almost nothing has it now I mean it's you know it has uh, you know with the exception of course at, at our um, public safety uh, yeah in that that's just a sign of the times yeah it's just a difficult role that that our police officers have been placed in and but that that's coming along yeah and it's just been tremendous for morale and mm -hmm. the attitude and and i've talked about this it's been a part uh, it's been used as we've changed the culture of this city and that is uh going from a culture where our people felt that folks on the street work for the folks at the city when it's 180 for that mm. and our culture has changed today we understand and I hear him just uh, uh, two days ago got the nicest letter from inter interim president at Bevel State Community College bragging on our fire department our police department uh, a fire case that, that they had to work and uh, and treating people right doing the things we're supposed to do and that's become infectious and we're doing a great job with that across this city that's important Kathy the uh, all along the way as we have, uh, have worked to strengthen the city uh, uh, being fiscally responsible uh, encouraging our people to be supportive of expense management whatever our people have bought in it's paid big dividends to us and uh, what we know at this point while we don't have the precise numbers for the end of fiscal year 2020 we'll have that in the next few days but what we know and we won't disclose those numbers they haven't been disclosed to our council yet but well, we know well enough at this point what's going to happen and Kathy why we've been able to do all of these things we have seen our reserves grow from about 1.3 million to what we, based on a conversation you and I had yesterday, we probably end fiscal 2020 at um, over nine million dollars. Is that correct? I so, so. Uh, <clears throat> I went to a small country school, Kathy and I. <laughs> she went to town, and I went to Eldridge. So we uh, uh, we try not to be too disadvantaged by having to go on country school. I don't think it hurt us. Do I you? don't think so. <laughs> But um, anyway, all the way, we we put about two million dollars of meat on the bones of this city every year we've been here, That's haven't exactly we? Exactly right. And uh, all the while doing work. So it's been an unprecedented four years. Not for me. I don't have any political ambitions beyond where I'm at. Uh, Miss Shannon, none of us are looking mm -hmm. for accolades or whatever. But. We think it's important for you to see what's going on, and they've been a lot of contributors here. The big contributor has been our employees buying in. I came here, right here in this room where this is being filmed, and Mrs. Uh, Shamless will confirm this. I told our people, our department, I said, if you'll buy into this plan, it'll make a difference in the city, and it'll benefit you. They bought in, and it's made a difference for them. Six pay raises in four years. Uh, reserves growing from a little over a million to nine million dollars so it's a great time we uh, we look to the next four years with great anticipation we'll uh, be talking about that as we go along and some of the things that we have in mind but uh, uh, please uh, send us your questions uh, there's always naysayers that uh, uh, there's folks out there that'll complain about your ice cream being cold I understand that uh, 
but we're not deterred by that. Our focus is helping the people of this city. That's what we're hired for, and that's what we're going to do every day. So thank you for being with us, and we'll look forward to being with you next week.